we're getting some more snow right now. This is the last little push of the storm, but it's gonna it's supposed to be kind of strong. Not the strongest part. That was early this morning, but uh, this should be decent. We could get another inch or two, maybe three out of this last little push. So keeping my fingers crossed, that works out for us. Right now we're going to the other side of town to pick up a, uh, a couple. They are two good friends of mine and just wonderful people, just wonderful people. And they want to cruise for a video. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'll go pick you guys up for tonight's video. But since it snows a lot more here than it does their place, I got to start the recording now, unfortunately. But I will stop it real shortly so they don't have to feel like they didn't get to be on the video. Much. This is on Moon Ridge. This is everyone leaving Bear Mountain right now. So it's coming down pretty good again. But yeah, I just want to show you guys what it's like. There's one of the satellite parking lots for Snow Summit right there. And people are just getting finished for the day. Anyway, I'm gonna shut it off for now until we get over there. So many of you are coming up to have a good time. I'm so glad. I am so glad. But yeah, we get to go pick up a couple friends real quick. A couple years back. Such sweet people. Robert and Regina. Regina works for the crepe company in town. The crepe restaurant. It's, man, I'm telling you guys. The owners of that place are some of the just nicest people ever. They always treat me well. Uh, they're always inviting me over to hang out and I, I just never have time and I feel so bad because if anyone to hang out with, these are the best people. I mean, just wonderful people. But yeah, when you uh, see the crepe place, it's a little tiny little drive through tiny little place. But <laughs> don't let the size deceive you. They have some amazing crepes. Yeah, we're gonna take the these back roads right here and for now we're just gonna stop the video to avoid all that traffic we're going on the other side of town so this will be a long video but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna post like these parts i think towards the end just so uh they get seen because they're really nice people all right so i do need to shut it off for a little bit unless anything really seriously changes it's coming down heavy you guys this is so nice we're on uh I believe it's called McAllister. And then we turn left on Sugar Pine for less than a quarter of a block and then make an immediate right onto Division Road. But yeah, so as I said, I don't want this to be too long without them. Okay, here we go. We're in the Big Bear City part of town now. We're heading to the North Shore. This is Big Bear Boulevard. We're crossing Big Bear Boulevard. We're on Division Road. We're heading to the North Shore. It's another way to, uh, you know, avoid traffic, or at least avoid a lot of it. All right, guys, so I've got two of my best friends in the car right now, and believe it or not, we met through this, this channel, right? Yeah, I was watching you before we even moved up here, so it's really a trip actually being in a video of yours now, so. Dude, guys, it's, <laughs> it's a trip having you guys here with me. They've been here since the start, you guys, basically. That's Robert right there. Hey, and, guys. And that is Regina. They are the sweetest damn couple up in Big Bear, and I'm just so honored to cruise around with them. So, all right, right guys. Picking us up. Oh, dude, it's my, it's, yeah, it's my pleasure, you guys. So we're gonna, we're gonna go do this. We gotta run by the, run by my pad real quick on our way back. You know why? <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and then if you get cold, you let me know, you guys. Sure, that's what we do. Okay, all right. We do have a good jacket. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you just let me know, dude. Yeah. I don't want you to freeze. I put your seat heater on. Oh shoot. And then uh, you can control whatever you want right here. Nice. The heat, the heat stuff. I want you guys to be comfortable. No, I'm actually pretty cold. Why? Bundled right. up just in case, like you had to like roll the windows down to get any good shots or anything. So. You have a new? What's that? Your phone? No, this is that new iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's it's I'm I'm telling you like 
out of all the cases, this one doesn't have like all the bells and whistles, and it's the best case I've ever had. What is it? Speaking? It's just a straight up leather case. Like oh, just like a basic. Yeah, yeah. Usually I would get like the, all the like super armor. All the tra yes, and the ones that charge your stuff too. Like yeah. And, it has uh, a battery in it. Yeah, like in it. like the Mophie cases. I yeah, those are. I used to buy those back in the day, but no more. I'm, I was always afraid to buy one of those because I don't know, like if you drop it, the case might work. But I was always afraid, like bust the battery in it or something. I don't know. Yeah, see, that's the thing is, uh, I would bust my batteries, and yeah. then the batteries would completely just run totally down. Jesus. And they cost like a hundred bucks almost. Yeah. So it's like. Now it's just a case with a heavy case. Yeah, I just needed to learn how to not be so damn lazy. <laughs> like when I'm in the car, I can easily just plug it in. Like it's really not that difficult. You know, you're just charging in your pocket. Yeah, it's really not that difficult. But yeah. I mean, while it worked, while I didn't break it, it was nice to have the phone like 100% all the time. <laughs> I mean, all the time. I can imagine. But, yeah. Isn't this cool, guys? And as you guys know, on the that side of town, there's more snow, obviously. And then you go that way, there's less. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first one said from the one second to, little push. Yeah, it said yeah. like one to three inches, and I was like, oh, we're getting. Yeah, this is the type of snow that is the accumulating kind right here. Just a steady, not big snowflakes, just a steady snow. Like, I'll bet if we looked on the weather things, it would say right now this is snow because there's light snow and there's snow flurries and. Um, Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, totally. Yeah, yeah, very good, man. Yeah, and uh, but this is 100% snow, and at the rate it's falling, it might not look like that much to the people on the screen here, but um, this is the, the type of snow that'll probably be like one to two inches per hour. Like it's not super, but it's it's a it's a good amount for us. Yeah, it'll actually start sticking. And as I told you guys yesterday, unfortunately, every storm that rolls through here, like like we like we get the the warm brunt of the storm which is the most powerful part. And then once that main part of the storm comes through, the cold front sweeps through. And that's when we end up getting like- The tail end. The, the exactly, moisture, the tail end and the wraparound moisture and stuff. And and then we'll that's when we'll get most of our snow. But if you guys have noticed the past many years that you've been here, like in, like uh, a lot of our storms start- Yeah, third winter. Yeah. Third, third winter. Yeah. So you've definitely noticed that lots of our storms will start as, as like rain. Yeah. And yeah. Like in like we'll get like enough rain where it would have been like two feet of snow, and then as soon as the storm's like just about done, like a few more hours, it gets cold enough to snow. Then... Yes, yes, yes. Sleet and grapple. <laughs> yes. Yep. Rain. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I, I I saw that. Like the only positive for rain is like it's the rain is what it is going to help fill the lake up faster. Because this, like the snow, lots of it evaporates before it, it gets down to the lake. <clears throat> but the rain it actually soaks it. Yeah, yeah, and then just rushes right, right on down. So if you know, you know, this isn't the time of year that we have, we really see good thunderstorms. But a couple winters up here, I've seen a couple good, good uh, um, thunder snow. Yeah, it's just so cool, man. Once. I don't know if it was last year or the first year we moved up, we had a couple good little lightning cracks during the snowstorms. Like, oh wow. Believe it or not, that's very rare. Like, uh, One but. One of the coworkers was actually saying they have never seen it, so I guess yeah. it was actually pretty fortunate that we were able to Exact. Hence my point. It's extraordinarily rare. Like it's um, even in spots where all spring and summertime you're getting loaded with massive thunderstorms, like the Denver area and all of that stuff in the Midwest. But when a lot of these winter storms come in, they don't have a lot of thunderstorms or updraft associated with them. And so they. Um, but here, because of where we're we are located, we actually get a decent amount of thunderstorms, thunder snow up here as opposed to most places anywhere. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, these last two have been horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. The first year up here, it was like, we had like maybe three solid weeks. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, my first year was insane too. It was like five and a half years ago. Yeah, it was insane. Like, uh, I did one of my first first videos was uh, it was like a 15 second video of me standing by my window with all the power out because of the na the nasty thunderstorm and. Dude, it just, it literally struck right above my house and the Best Western, the whole sky lit up, the, everything lit up, like it was brighter than day. And, it, and as soon as you saw the light, the thunder like rocked my house and like you can hear me freaking out, like, oh my God, my whole house is shaking. <laughs> like dude, it, it, dude but it, it was so cool. It was so cool. Right. Yeah, it was just amazing. Seriously, the thunder must have literally like shook dude it was it, it it shook the whole place all the car alarms were freaking going off and like the only time that's ever happened to me in the past was it when i was in boarding school in denver and one morning at like 7 a.m like uh, i woke up to not my alarm but to being literally like like shoved out of bed by the loudest noise that i've ever freaking heard or felt and i ran upstairs and looked out our window and the next thing i saw was a lightning bolt again right in front of the house just so i knew exactly what it was dude i i saw a tornado out there i've seen tornadoes here yeah oh yeah oh yeah so just to the east of the rocky mountains it's complete plains all the way through Kansas and Iowa and stuff, it's completely flat. So what ends up happening is the Arctic cold, cold air from the north comes down and it, it gets caught in, in the front range. And so it, it doesn't get over the mountain range of the Rockies, it gets caught in the front and it gets pushed down towards the Gulf. And then the warm Gulf moisture comes up right there. That's where freaking tor uh, the whole tornado alley is and stuff. And, um, uh, but so those two, air masses merge every spring a whole ton and that's why they get walloped with the most intense thunderstorms tornadoes severe hail um but yes you're out you're 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 absolutely right mountainous areas uh, you'll you will you'll never really see one um it's 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 the most rare thing in the mountains um because yeah you're absolutely right like uh, any undulation it like breaks in, in the topography absolutely absolutely that's exactly what it does and uh yeah it just screws up its, well, it's, its formation like... no you're absolutely right yeah so yeah it's interesting but i've seen about five or six um uh, th uh they're technically tornadoes but when they're over the ocean because i grew up on the ocean so i would see when storms would roll in i would see once in a while a, a tornado right off right off the coast um yeah, and and those are called water spouts, but if, yes, yes. But the the cool thing is, is that if that water spout moves on shore and it's out of the water, then it's called a tornado. <laughs> so like uh, like I was stoked to see a, an actual tornado a few times. That's crazy. Like right right off the coast here. Yeah, L.A. I've watched this video over and over again where um, in like in like the Compton area, I think of like an F1 tornado dropped down and like ripped off freaking uh, roofs and stuff. Some dude was recording the whole thing. It's just insane, just insane. Like he, he walks outside and he's just tripping out. We good? Poor people. That was nice of him to stop though. Oh, unless he's with him. Yeah guys, see this is humanity up here, man. We got nice people. You got it, dude. Yeah. Well, that's a thought. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Earlier, I, on one of the earlier videos, there were a, a few people literally parked in the middle of, of the lane, and so I, you know. Well, some people like. Back when I used to work at the market, yeah, we used to see people like sliding down, or just like I'm not trying to be rude. Just some people, it's like it's like they don't use. Say common sense, but just... and they're in a state of fear too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially when you can't see the line and all so... the stress of like, like worrying about like screwing up other people's day, right? Like, uh, or at least that's me. I hate being that guy to like hold people up in anything, the grocery store line, anything. Like, I'm like the most like courteous person. Like, um, but when it comes to like this stuff, when, like when you're on the flat space, like the only reason why it really bothers me is because with a lot of the, a lot of our fans here or friends, not fans, sorry, friends on this channel, they, 
lot of them don't get to drive in snow often and so with people stopped in the, the middle of the road when it's already hard enough to drive in this yeah, stuff you can't get started again dude, it's, you know what and lots of times even on this flat surface lots of these cars are not meant to you know even with minor like compressions of the brake like like you'll start sliding and um that car that stopped like it, it's it's you know i wasn't mad at him I was worried that he was gonna get hurt. Exactly. If someone else can't stop totally. the time, exactly. see them, especially with conditions like that. Exactly, and like he wasn't paying attention at all. Like he was like like trying to like figure out how to put on his chains, just not looking at, at like any traffic. something to some of the people maybe coming up here? Please. I know you've probably told people to bring chains, but a lot of people, especially if they were like first time people driving in the snow, they don't realize that a lot of chains are model specific, so you need to make sure, and a lot of the places up here may not carry chains specific to your car. I've seen this time and time again, and a lot of people also don't know how to put on your chains. If you're going to come up here and, I mean, check, I think it's K-Bear or a radio station, they'll tell you, like, what the road conditions are, and if you need chains, please, like, learn how to put chains on and learn what chains your car requires, because our stores may not, even if they carry them, so many people come up here, they may be sold out, or you may have trouble even getting to that place. You know, you, you never know. So please, just if you're coming up here, don't just get chains. Make sure they actually fit your car and know how to put them on. Because it, seriously, like Nick's saying, you don't want to be one of these poor people stranded. It's bad enough in like you know a populated area or a flat area, but I've seen on your videos people stranded at the bottom of hills or in deep snow, and yeah, it's just not. It's not. It's not good. It's not, especially when they come up here to have fun, right? Exactly. Like, Guys, she just left you guys with some really good information because that's something that I actually did not necessarily know. Um, and it's, but now that she mentioned it, it's absolutely like now I'm, that I'm thinking about it. Yes, it's absolutely makes sense. She's absolutely right. When you come up here, keep in mind, like if you have a car that's got like low profile tires or like some like awesome tires, the chances of you finding chains up here for those are not going to be easy. Most of the chains that you'll find up here are for like normal, normal car tires, like, uh, like, you're like regular whatever Ford put on not like 22 cars. inch rims or like this or that yeah, like I uh see so many like Tesla's come in nice cars yeah you know, and just like if you just upgraded your car you just you just want to make sure you're prepared and it's just so sad because I don't drive we don't drive so we don't exactly know where to tell people to go and get chains it's like I can give you a basic idea but I don't know like you know exactly how to help every single person so if you know how to you just did help yourself you know <laughs> you you a little extra bit of research. research you absolutely just did because guys another valid point that she absolutely made is we is yeah we do have a lot of people who who are good hearted and who are trying to make money and help you guys out at the same time but she is absolutely right you like uh it's worth spending a couple extra bucks to have some pro who, who you know not just some like random person who says they like put on chains but watch them put the chains on for you and have them teach you so you can learn because she is absolutely right you need to know how to put on your chains and the best way to learn would be to watch a youtube video or for me like like because i'm not like you know i don't know it's hard for me with lots of things um i have to be shown how to do it and then it it's really easy for me that's probably why i struggled in school because like reading all the books and stuff was just not not fun for me but. they only really teach in like one style in school and there's like three different types of learning styles so it sounds like you're more of a visual learner yes like yes a hands -on learner. i'm a hands-on i've never been an audible learner yeah, or I've yeah I've never like, yeah how do you like my trees guys they're dope Gorgeous. Aren't they insane? Like All right, guys, we still got my two good friends in in the car with us. We, we don't we, we don't want to get rid of them yet, especially with all the good information we're we're being given. Because the things that she mentioned, that Regina mentioned, you guys are very 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 helpful. Um, as much as it's a pain in the butt for us to put on our own chains and stuff like like that, I'm I'm pretty sure once you learn how, it's not going to be that bad. And if you're dressed properly, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's just the thought of like it's that first time doing it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you'll be fine and that's a great idea is uh yeah, always learn because uh you you never know who's putting your chains on up here. They may have the best intentions. They really might. 
but you got to remember that your vehicle's worth a lot and you're worth and you're priceless so you want to make sure that you get it done properly um and if if you don't want to learn there are professional you know uh chain putter honors oh, yeah. <laughs> um and you can find them um you know in the yellow or not the yellow pages you know what i mean you guys you can find them but uh for like the nice folks who are just randomly offering if you're in an in emergency situation i i can understand but she, regina's right regina's right there's just I way too much to risk guarantee for a small added price if you're renting a car you can also probably wrap chains with them like no guarantee but i can almost bet that you can't put a price on it but if you're telling them hey i'm renting a car up here it's snow season they're probably gonna have as some type of insurance policy to their vehicle, a chains option. Oh, you least, know what? That's, a, that's that's not uh, that's a great thought because uh, you don't ask. Yeah, no, that's a great thought. That's because yeah, they want to protect their cars more. With the chains, you can't return them because exactly. once they're, they're used, used, yeah. But for that small investment, or whatever. but what they'll probably make you do is buy the chains. is pay another insurance thing for the snow, how they do for everything, like, and then. Uh, yeah, dude, that's that's like a really good idea. Like, at, like Denver International Airport and like other places like that for the people driving up yep. to to the Rockies when they rent a car there. Man, that's a great idea. Right. <laughs> Sorry, person. <laughs> Shouldn't fall asleep right there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, what were they thinking? <coughs> I like driving with my brights on when we're when we have snow. Obviously, oh, when, yeah, a, see when a car comes, I don't. <laughs> Like that. It's so cool. I just love it. I know how I'll make this little drive differently. We're going to turn left on uh, Starvation Flats instead of Division. Oh. Or instead of uh, McAllister and then left on Sugar Pie and then right on Division. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're just going to turn left on McAllister. Wow, I can't believe I know these streets. Right. <laughs> you just wrap them all. My first job here was at Domino's and like, dude, I, I was the most nerve wracking thing ever because I had no idea where I'm going and like everyone started getting frustrated with me after day two. What? Not not like frustrated, but like kind of making fun of me that, you know, it's such a small town. Like, and I'm asking them all the time, like, like, wh like where is this place? I know I'm going to put it in my GPS, but just to try and save save time so I can start to head to one of the deliveries and then type in the... It? Which area, what now? No, like you were trying to ask them, like which general area is like this address gonna be in? So There's you... a lot of like Wayne County roads up here. Yes. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was. It's okay. My, my uh, phone. Died. Uh, it said low power. Sorry about putting the phone down like that, guys. Crotch shot. Yep. <laughs> Not much to see there. <laughs> Uh, it's fun making fun of ourselves, but not in like a way to, to be hurtful towards ourselves, you know, but I don't take <laughs> myself like seriously that. until I have to. I don't take life seriously anymore until I have to, because life's about abundance and life is about enjoying every single second. And life is supposed to be like just the most incredible adventure you could ever go on. And as I said, like life is meant to be full of abundance in every single area. And all the wisest people that have ever lived have all known this. And uh, so, yeah, just uh, for those of you that feel stuck out there, trust me, man. Like, like I was stuck. Nine rehabs, two treatments, two sober living houses and stuff. And everyone around me saying I'm a piece of crap. I'm not going to amount to nothing. Like, except my mom and dad. They were always supportive, but everyone else. But uh, you guys have it in you. And don't listen to the people around you. As I said earlier, it's the people around you that are saying this probably, and this is how you should look at it, they probably feel like you're gonna steal some of their thunder and you're gonna, you know, take over their supposed, you know, uh, a good MO or, or just whatever they are and they don't want you to get the attention because they know that you're gonna do very well. And unfortunately, a lot of uh, human beings who who aren't willing to put the effort into life, um, they'll, they'll, they'd rather probably see their friends not not do well, not like to their face, but just so they don't have to feel so bad about being so low in their life. So don't listen to anything anybody says, you guys. If if I did, I would, I'd be nowhere. I'd be nowhere. Like you just gotta believe in yourself. And every single one of you has so much potential to do absolutely anything you want and conquer anything you want. 
And once again, I'm a perfect testament to that. Like I've, I've overcome so much, you guys, and I'm still overcoming so much. Like, I mean, just, just please give yourselves a chance. Like give yourselves a chance for like a month. Like don't think about what anyone else says and just believe in yourself and love yourself and give yourself a real honest to God chance at life for, for, for 30 days and literally see what, see, see what's going to happen to you when you start to change your thinking, your attitude, the feelings you have. Um, like, uh, it's, you're not going to believe what's, what's about to happen to you guys. Like, uh, I'm telling you from experience, I, I didn't believe it until my life was in such just shambles that, uh, I didn't have any choice. I had zero choice. Is that what? I'm not trying to Oh, no, 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 no. I talk a lot. It's all good. It's weird. I feel like they're like here with us. Oh yeah. And, and you guys are, that's, yeah. that's the craziest. You guys, I always tell you, I feel like you're here with me, and they are here with me. See, so the channel is here. Like, <laughs> what was that, Regina? Be, I was saying, what you're saying is really true. Like, I used to kind of like, and I can still have days where, it's, you know, things are tough, but, I know it sounds really simple, but a cure to, like, life's hardship is really just being grateful for what you have. And I know it sounds, like, Dude, so cliche and so, like, simple <laughs> and, like, so, like, really that, but no, really, being grateful for just, especially up here, like, the songbird. You're really so incredible, like Regina. Snow, She's friends, people. I, I don't know. Just the small thing. It doesn't have to be. Just a little bit. Or like how I love your new channel. Just like experiencing the good things in life. Sometimes you can even like splurge, treat yourself. But dude, even if you can't. What just happened? Sorry about that. We just went through this red twice now. Yeah. Was it me? Oh no 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 no! I just figured I may have passed the thing, but the guy right behind me, he's he's sitting right on the damn. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, but guys, what she just said, oh my gosh, like what changed for me was when I started to write my gratitude lists every day, every night, right before I went to sleep, what I'm going to achieve in life, what I'm grateful for. And uh, every night it's still, it's one page long and it's been months and months and I don't miss it at all. But once you start being grateful for what you have and stop focusing on what you don't have, like I don't have the car I want, I don't have the clothes I want, I don't have this, I don't have the job I want, I don't have the man or the woman I want. like if you keep on focusing on that, you're just going to get more of what you don't want. That's the, that's the thing. You need to focus on what you want and it will come into your life because the energy that you put out there is definitely going to draw that into you. It, it really does. And I'm a perfect example of that. And with her saying this stuff, like, like guys, gratitude is the key. That is the first thing you should do. If you want to change anything is really be grateful though. Like, like, like write a gratitude list or however you want to do it, but really like feel, like feel the feel the gratitude for what you're saying you're freaking grateful for. Like, like uh, I don't know, the ears to listen to me, the uh, <laughs> like you're running water, something like the fact that we have jobs that we're able to put gas on when there's so many people right now that aren't able to do that. The fact that you know we're able, at least we're able to be around each other when there's so many people who can't. You know, I don't know. Just, seems like small things, but it's like if you realize, I, I, I learned a lot from like Taoism and Buddhism and that's what they really talk about is the root of all suffering is attachment and want and it's, I mean, we're human, we're gonna want, you know, we have basic needs and stuff, but it's wanting more than what you really need and just feeling like it's like that misery of like always wanting more and never being satisfied that really just kind of keeps people stuck. And yeah, look, 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 look see, I, I agree with that because that makes sense to a point like, uh, um, because with like me, uh, it's not like I'm like constantly chasing things, but, um, it's, it, it just seems like everything that I am wanting it, and, uh, but I'm putting effort towards it. Like, uh, like, uh, lots of people, they get excited about this stuff and then they hear, oh, there's there's an action step type thing that you probably you're 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 gonna have to take like but and then the and they freak out right they're like oh action oh i just wanted to like win the lottery or like like i thought i could just like think and feel that i have a million dollars in my bank account and it'll be there in the next day like what you, to you guys need to understand that. is that oh no, it's sorry okay. sorry Real quick. I was just going to say, I was like, you have to understand the steps that will take you to that thing that you desire, not just the hope that it's going to land in your lap, like the next morning. Exactly. Which is why it's important when you're thinking about things. That's why 
most people who think about what they want and just do simple prayer just by saying things and nothing ever happens, it's because you need to feel it. You need to put that energy into the universe. You, Manifest. You, yes, and you need to feel it like it's already happening. Um, and, uh, that's why vision boards are amazing. Huge, man. That's, that's a great, yeah. Vision boards are freaking great, guys. The Secret taught a lot of people about that. And it's a, it's an absolutely great tool because you're constantly looking at the things in life that you you're want. You're already seeing yourself. Exactly, exactly. But that's the thing. You have to feel yourself as if you already have these things. And what's going to become crazy to you is over time, you, consist, you consistently do this. And it's not going to take long. I promise it didn't for me. You're going to not want a lot of the things that you originally wanted, which is super weird. Like, like changing my life, like my wants and stuff have changed. But what I realized, which is awesome, which should help you guys, is when it comes to the action steps and stuff like this, what this whole process does when you change your thinking and your feelings, the whole process makes it so once you get to that that action step and you're feeling the things that you want and already have essentially, the action steps are gonna be things that you wake up and want to do. Like you're gonna wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I am so excited. I get to get out of bed today to go do this. Like, oh my gosh, like that's the thing is that prior to this, these tasks would have seemed just, 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 mo just like monumental tasks that could not ever be accomplished. Just, just so overwhelming, right? Just, or just so like unpleasant. Yeah, 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 and just not like what you would want to do. So you'll, you'll give up hope on that. It's, it's not for me. I'm meant to just be one of the ones who's not wealthy or, or you know, fiscally happy. And no, you all are meant to be happy in every single, every single facet of life, and you know, a, abundance is promised. But when it comes to like being selfish and stuff, Regina was absolutely right. Like, uh, um, those are the things that never end up working out in the long term at, at all. But once you're once you're grateful for for so much that you already have, and just just feel that gratitude for that stuff and start focusing on the things that you want in life and feel like you already have it. I'm telling you guys right now, these action steps, because once you feel like you're you're already there, I'm telling you guys, it's just a huge weight off your shoulders because it makes everything else so much easier to accomplish. And, and then you feel like you can help other people too. And then <laughs> That's the main like thing out of this. That's the main thing out of this. Hang on a quick sec guys, real Not quick. That. We're just gonna finish this up real quick. Well, no, well, not real quick, but we're on the other side of town. We're in the Bear City part of town, and I'm probably freezing her. Freaking hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you guys can see, it's always, the further you go this way, the less snow you will see. Um, as you guys know, I, I coined it as the Big Bear Snow Rule, and it, it's, it just it really seems to be the case. <laughs> I mean, I have 2,500 freaking videos to prove it, <laughs> yeah. you know? like. Like that was one of the craziest things. My first year, like every storm, I, pre, during, and after drives, I would drive the whole valley. So each video was like an hour long, each storm. Like, uh, and you would get to see Baldwin every time and get to see the dam every time. So, so just, dude, Baldwin is, can be a brutal place. Like that place gets so windy and just ridiculously cold sometimes, but they get hardly any snow. Like I've seen six inches at the dam and zero snow out there. Zero, absolutely nothing. Just at our house, we had a few days where nothing was at like our house, and other people that live like over by like, uh, like the village area, they're like, "Oh, it's snowing." I was like, "It's." <coughs> so that's what that happened to me all the time, dude. Like, uh, I'd have people calling me, or I would call them, "Hey, it's freaking dumping," and they're like, "What are you talking about? It's clear up here. I'm a sugar loaf." And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, it's dumping over here. Like, it's just dumping. Like, oh, whatever. And then it shows up eventually. But... <laughs> uh, yeah, this is definitely a needed storm. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I got to drive through some parts that got about 18 inches of snow up in Upper Moon Ridge. On the video that uh, you guys see where I drive through Moonloaf, yeah, it, it, yeah, we watched that. Okay, yeah. So that there, the 18 inches. at the very top, there was about 18 inches in some spots because you could see where the tire marks cut through the snow. It's hard to tell in the video, honestly. It's a little bit. really hard, really hard. Yeah, look, like uh, obviously there's nothing we're freaking digging in, so that, no. that, that, it's that not yeah, even yeah, so not yeah, even. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going past like some of the birds. Where the? Oh, 
saying? Yeah, did I go the right way? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what just happened. That was a trip. I just felt like I like. Well, I know, dude. It's it's, it's like because <laughs> you can't see anything. Up no. There. Guys, the closer we're getting to Robert and Regina's place, they're giving us a they're giving us a blizzard. Oh, oh no, no, Mountain View. You're on, uh, on, uh, 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 yes, yes. Angeles. Yeah. That's right. Every time I see it, I, I remember. Don't ever be sorry. You're freaking awesome. You probably just helped a whole bunch of people out. Yes. That's right. A whole bunch of people out. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's the one with the icicles, right? Yeah. All right, guys, so I'm gonna pull you in real quick right where I dropped you or picked you up. Thanks, my buddy. And then uh, if I could no, just have fun, you guys. Man. Well, dude, it, it was more fun the fact that we had you guys here and I got to actually like talk to my friends. Thank you. Anytime, dude. Like, we enjoy getting out. You are welcome. Do you have mind if I right say goodbye real quick? Of course. Okay. All right, guys. Later, channel. <laughs> Yeah, man. Guys, this is what Big Bear's about. These are the type of people you will meet if you come up here and move up here. I'm telling you, it doesn't get better than this. I love you guys to death. But it's too bad. Be safe. I absolutely be safe will. Yeah. I absolutely will. You guys will be safe coming up too. Guys, you hear that? She's wishing you all safety driving up here. I'm telling you guys, these are the sweetest people around. I love them to death. They are the best. Later. Bye, Nick. Bye, you guys. Oh, they're so awesome, you guys. I love them so much. It's just so sweet. All right, so yeah, this was a little bit longer of a video. We kind of did like part of the same drive twice, but it's different times and different conversations, so hopefully it doesn't irritate you guys too much. <coughs> Smoker's cough is almost going to be gone in a few weeks. Give myself a couple weeks to get rid of the cough. A lot of these streets over here, guys, if you go over the edge at all on these sides, if you don't hit a driveway, you're gonna hit a ditch. So just be extremely careful. Anyway, I think I'm gonna shut it down for right now, but I wanted you guys to know that uh, I love you guys a lot with all my heart. Anything I can do to help you guys, I absolutely will. Um, any information, sometimes when I don't respond right away during all this storminess, if you notice that I've been doing a lot of videos and it's obvious that I'm not sleeping, please do not take it personally if I just accidentally crash out or something and not respond for a while. <coughs> Thank you guys very much, I appreciate it. I need to like get someone to like respond to a lot of the uh, safety stuff if I'm like sleeping or something because I don't want you guys to wait on that information. You guys need to know that stuff ASAP. So anyway, peace out you guys, much love and respect. I will talk to you guys later.